Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Satya Narayan, and I'm an attorney at the uh, Royce Law Firm in uh, Silicon Valley, uh, California. Uh, we do a lot of um, licensing transactions, uh, very technology focused, and we have a very large international client base, which um, by necessity then uh, puts us right in the middle of a lot of cross-border transactions. So uh, what I'm going to talk to uh, talk to you about today is uh, uh, cross-border licensing issues based on uh, the transactions I've handled and uh, the experiences I've gained from that. <coughs> so um, going global, I'm sure a lot of you know there are a lot of advantages to this. Um, uh, companies go global for new markets for their goods and services. Uh, they want to, a lot of Indian companies uh, set up uh, subsidiaries or affiliates in uh, the U.S. to be closer to their U.S. customers. Um, a lot of companies uh, go out to shop for advanced technologies. Um, a lot of uh, U.S. companies uh, look for uh, human resource, the talent that's in India in software. Uh, companies, of course, go cross-border when they need low-cost manufacturing centers. Um, and then uh, a lot of companies find that uh, there's saturation in their own markets or they find uh, there's intense competition in their markets and again that goes back to the first point which is go out to new markets. Uh, there are tax advantages sometimes to going cross-border and uh, companies, a lot of startups, look outside the national borders for uh, overseas funding. So there are a lot of um, advantages to going global. Uh, increasingly, we see not just uh, uh, you know, the established companies which want to expand outside the domestic markets, but rather we see a lot of startups who uh, are uh, crossing the border, seeking strategic partnerships, seeking funding, and all of that involves intellectual property and technology. Going global, there are some paths set up uh, foreign 